What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2023 schedule preview projected record series. The Florida Gators are up next before we get to 2023. Let's look back at 2022. What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports here at the Voice of College Football. We're going to preview the 2023 schedule for the Florida Gators. Here was the schedule from 2022. You can see a 6-7 six and seven record, 6-6 six and six in the regular season. Started off great with a win over Utah, and you thought maybe Florida was going to be a, you know, have a good year this past season, but then they lose to Kentucky at home. Uh, just really needed to win that game at home. Then South Florida, remember that game was actually close. Then they played on the road at Tennessee. Uh, not surprised now that they lost that game, of course. They took care of business against Eastern Washington and Missouri, so it was still all right there for them. They were 4-2, and two, still the chance to have a good year. But then the LSU game, they lose that one, then they lose to Georgia. But then they did bounce back. They beat Texas A&M and South Carolina before losing to Vanderbilt, which was inexcusable, and then Florida State. So just an up-and-down year for Florida. Some moments where they looked like a top 25 team and some other moments where they didn't even look like a, an average team. So that it was just up and down all year for them. Um, even even in some of the games, just go to the Georgia game. Just in that game alone, there were times where they looked really good and there were times where they just didn't look good at all. So inconsistency really the story for, for Florida in 2022. Let's look ahead to 2023 now. This is who they play outside of the division. They'll play on the road at Utah this time, then McNeese and Charlotte, and then they'll play Florida State at home. So you've got two Power Five games in the non-conference, Utah and Florida State. And, you know, and I give a lot of of credit to these teams like Florida uh, that have a, a, a rivalry game every year. They're going to play Florida State every year, every year, a big non-conference game, and then they still go out and schedule a big Power Five opponent like Utah. So a lot of credit for Florida for doing that. Gives you two quality opponents in the non-conference. And then you look at who they play out of the West. They'll play Arkansas and on the road at LSU. Of course, they play LSU every year. But at least they avoid Alabama. I guess that's the good news. But that's a pretty tough draw, again, with Arkansas and LSU out of the West. Here is the schedule week by week. They will open up with Utah on the road. Of course, played them at home last year. This time, they'll go travel to Utah. That's going to be a very tough game. Tough place to play to open up the season. McNeese is up next after that. Then they'll play Tennessee on September 16th. Huge game early in the year. If they're going to have any chance to make a run in the big in the SEC East, you're going to have to win that game at home uh, because, of course, you still have Georgia on the schedule as well. And they're going to be the favorites, I believe, in the East once again. And then Charlotte after that. So, uh, And then Kentucky. Kentucky on the road September 30th. So two conference games there in the month of September. Also a very tough non-conference game on the road at Utah. You're going to know by the end of September about this Florida team. There's a good chance they could be two and three. I mean, it, it, and it could look bad again. You've got to find a way to win one of those games against Utah, Tennessee, and Kentucky, I think. Start off three and two. Um, and then again, the schedule, it's, it's tough all the way through. After that, they'll play Vanderbilt. That'll be a revenge game for Florida. Remember, they did lose to Vandy last year. Uh, so that's one that they've got to win. Then it's on the road at South Carolina. That's going to be a tough one. That'll be a, a revenge game for South Carolina. Then they'll get the bye week before playing Georgia. Of course, Georgia is going to be just a monumental test once again for Florida. Uh, it's just Georgia's the best. They've become the best program in college football. I think that's pretty clear. And I don't really see them dropping off next year. So that'll be a very, very tough game there against Georgia. Then it's Arkansas at home. Maybe a winnable game there. Arkansas uh, should be pretty good. They did lose a lot of guys to the transfer portal, so that's the good news. Plus, it's a home game. And then after that, they'll play LSU on the road. You've actually got back-to-back -back road games with LSU and Missouri. Those will be tough to win. And then Florida State, who's been a, a preseason top five team for a lot of people already, that will be tough as well. So this is, this is a very tough schedule. I mean... No doubt about it. This is a tough schedule. You look at, you know, worst case scenario here, just games that they could very realistically lose. I mean, there's a good chance that, that they'll lose. You've got Utah, Tennessee, Kentucky on the road. We'll say we'll skip Vandy. Let's say they lose to South Carolina on the road. Georgia. Let's say they beat Arkansas, but they lose on the road to LSU, Missouri, and then Florida State. I mean, that gives you eight losses right there. I mean, it's just, it's a tough schedule. I mean, you flip that around, 
Um, if they take care of business, they beat Tennessee and they pull off a win against South Carolina and Missouri. I mean, you still got several losses here on the schedule. So it's just a really tough schedule for Florida this year. They pretty much always play one of the toughest schedules in the country. And I believe that this year it's right up there near the top, if not at the top. Uh, just a, a very tough schedule. Uh, I guess the good news is you, you've only got one back-to-back -back road game there with LSU and Missouri. Um, but, again, you get Vandy at home, Tennessee at home, Arkansas at home. Uh, Georgia is a home game, but, of course, it's a neutral site game for them. So that means you've got five SEC games away from Gainesville. It's just a really tough schedule. No other way to put it. Um, the 2023 schedule for Florida definitely going to be, like I said, one of the toughest in all of college football. Here were some of the projections from last season. Of course, they went six and six in the regular season. Our projection had them at seven and five. I picked them to go seven and five. Uh, the FBI had them right at seven and five, and the over/under was at seven and a half. So it, it was more of a seven and five, maybe eight and four types prediction for them in the preseason. They did not live up to those expectations, going only 6-6. Six and six. Really an up-and-down year for Florida. At times, they looked really good last year. At times, uh, they looked pretty bad. And we'll see you know, if maybe they can play with a little bit more consistency in 2023. It's a tough schedule, though. Here's that schedule again. And this is the scale that we will use. So if it's a 50-50 game, it'll stay in the white. Those are games where I think the spread uh, will be less than a touchdown. Games that could go either way. Under 20, over 80, those are games where I think the spread will be uh, 20 or more points. So we've got a couple of those games here, McNeese and Charlotte. Those should be easy wins for Florida. I really, I mean, no reason why they should lose either one of those games, and they'll be favored by, again, 20 or more points in both of them. Uh, 20 to 29, 71 to 80, those are games where I think the spread will be uh, double digits, 10 to 19 in that range, 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Those are games where I think the spread uh, will be about a touchdown, six, seven, eight, maybe nine points. Uh, you've got one of those games, Vanderbilt. You know, Vandy is a team that, that played pretty well at the end of last season. I don't think Florida is going to be a double-digit favorite. They might. They might be a, a 10 to 13-point favorite. Uh, it's really tough to say right now, you know, who's going to be the quarterback for Florida. How good is Florida even going to be? There are so many questions about them. And Vanderbilt, again, just the way they finished last year. I think there's enough there to put this game in the purple, but I was leaning towards the blue. I mean, it's hard, again, hard to say just how good Vanderbilt's going to be. Have they really improved, or did they just get a couple of fluke wins last season? We'll find out, of course. But I, I think it's always better to go conservative when you have a close call like this, and that's what we're going to do with Vanderbilt. So Florida favored in three games where three games where they should be clear favorites. Let's just put it that way. They might be favored in some more of these games. So how about the games where they'll be underdogs? I think you've got Georgia and LSU in that category to be a, a clear underdog, a pretty big underdog, probably double digits in both of those games. Uh, Florida, it, it, you know, they feel like they're a long ways away from competing with Georgia right now. And LSU figures to be a top five, possibly top five team this year, top 10 for sure. That game is on the road. That's going to be a really tough one for Florida. So I think they'll be, they'll be about two touchdown underdogs in both of those games. Not saying they have no chance, but for this projection, we are going to be counting those games as losses, and we'll, we'll come back and count McNeese and Charlotte as wins. So two two wins, two losses, everything else really could go either way, uh, but we'll, we'll do those percentages, percentages in just a second. But let's go now to the games where I think Florida will be underdogs, but not a huge underdog, so we're talking about, um, about a touchdown, six, seven, eight points. I think Tennessee... Uh, Utah, South Carolina, Florida State, all of these games kind of fit into that category. I know they beat Utah last season, but this time it's on the road at Utah. And I just I feel like Florida will be an underdog in that game. Maybe it's only six or seven points, but I do think they'll be an underdog. Same thing against Tennessee, especially playing at home. That gives them a chance. But I still think Tennessee will be favored by about six or seven. South Carolina also I think will be favored by about six or seven. And Florida State, same thing there. This is a team that is expected to be potentially a, a top five team this year. I've seen them in a lot of top five, way too early, top 25s. Uh, top 10 for sure, top top 12 for sure. And uh, Florida is a team that is not expected to be in the top 25, at least in the preseason. So these are all games that are going to be really tough for Florida. 
you know, can they maybe steal one or two of them? That would be huge, but they will be tough games. On the road at Utah, on the road at South Carolina, and then Tennessee and Florida State. And then that's going to leave Kentucky, Arkansas, and Missouri. These are your 50-50 games. If Florida's going to have a good season, they've got to at least win these games. You have to start here. You've got to go on the road and find a way to beat Kentucky. You've got to beat Arkansas. You've got to go on the road and beat Missouri. Then you'd have McNeese, Charlotte, and Vanderbilt. Um, so those are really the only games where Florida's not going to be a clear underdog. So that means for Florida to go, you know, even seven and five, they will have to pull off an upset and win all the games where they're favored and win all the 50-50 games. So this schedule really, uh, it, it, it's not looking great for Florida based off of this schedule. Now they could turn out to be better than we expect and they take care of business in the 50-50 games. They beat Fandy, Charlotte, McNeese, and then they upset Florida State. They upset Tennessee, you know, but but eight and four, eight and four is probably like best case scenario. Uh, there were actually, when you do the numbers, they were actually closer to five and seven than they were seven and five, but six and six is the projection. So when you take uh, 65%, use that for Vandy, 35% for these games in yellow, 50% for the games in white. When you average all that out, count Georgia and LSU as a loss, McNeese and Charlotte as a win, average all that out and you get six and six. So it was, you know, it was, it was over five and a half wins, but again, it was closer to five and seven than seven and five. And, you know, it's, it's not just that the schedule is tough, compared to recent years you know these teams are just better South Carolina is just better Vanderbilt's just better uh, LSU's better than they have been the last couple of years Missouri looks like they're getting better Florida State is, is better so it's just a lot of these teams Florida plays uh, they're all on the rise a lot of them are better than they've been Tennessee same thing um, you don't really have many of these teams going down maybe Kentucky but Kentucky could be pretty good again this year with with a, a new transfer quarterback so, yeah, it's it looking like with this schedule, it could potentially be another pretty rough year for Florida, but our projection for them in 2023 is 6-6. Six and six.